Hello and welcome to week three in developmental psych and we carry on our in sequence just like the lifespan is unfolding. We spend some time looking at those basic biological building blocks and now we're going into infancy and toddlerhood chapter three. As I say that, I do want to throw out there that there is a, um, a number of people have submitted their biography proposals and I know that assignment seems like it's way down the line but getting started on that is vital if you have an individual lined up fill out that particular quiz for the biography proposal get that done and then start doing the interview you're really going to need a lot of time to get that done so the sooner the better so here we are in chapter three infancy and childhood and the discussion focuses on Erickson's first two stages now Erickson as you're going to find out is a, a student of Sigmund Freud but he broke off with him and redefined Freud's psychosexual stages coining the term psychosocial stages where the relationship that is most vital in human development is the relationship between the developing psyche and the social environment that is supporting or negating that development. How hip is that? That's so modern and yet uh, this was done years ago. We're looking at the first two stages. This is a stage theory meaning that we move through these stages in sequence and we to any degree or not we successfully or unsuccessfully pass that stage and truthfully some of the therapeutic modalities that go back and look at earlier parts of our life in order to help us solve problems we're having as adults oftentimes rest themselves on some of these vital stages where individuals didn't really get a good shake and they didn't make it well through those the other little part about Erickson's theory is that they build upon one another because in the sense and when we talk about Piaget we're going to look at that cognitive thing changes that are going on that align with these psychosocial changes but what I mean here is that if you successfully pass a stage the next stage is more likely to be successful as well. So if you start early success, later success is more probable. If you start, if you don't do well early, then there's a tendency for things to kind of stay bad. Now there's not because the person necessarily stuck in that bad sense of things, but the situations that contributed to them having a bad step probably continue through childhood. None of this traps us in this particular stage or in a negativity there's all kinds of people that grew up in horrible situations and yet nonetheless progress through these uh through these stages well and there's individuals that as far as we know everything was fine and they struggled with these particular stages so it's not a predictive it's not a therapeutic model it's a descriptive model looking at stages that define the relationship between the developing psyche and the social environment. The first two are trust versus mistrust and autonomy versus doubt. So trust versus mistrust, infant, then we go to toddlerhood, right? Hence the name of the chapter. Um, infants are developing a sense, is the world gonna be there for me? And there's no such thing as a spoiled infant. There is a such thing as a spoiled toddler, no such thing as a spoiled infant they are crying you need to go see them they want you you have to be there it's kind of a full-time job really one of the challenges of a modern society is how well do we respond to children when they're during that first year so developing a basic sense of trust in the world or a basic sense of mistrust and the continuum along there is what's going on early in life most of us if not all of us have no memory of this but sometimes we can see later on issues that actually stem back to basic mistrust and um, basic trust. Individuals who have a sense of basic mistrust often have difficulties 
throughout their life, you know, we're looking at a really basement type foundation part of our psyche. They usually and many times have problems with relationships and connecting and bonding with other people, attachment issues, those kinds of things. In my experience, the individuals, I, I've never really met an individual with really, really profound trust issues who wasn't largely disabled by that. That doesn't mean that they're out there. That doesn't mean that they're not out there. Uh, lots of different variety. And there's lots of differences in terms of what we feel is a mistrust situation. It's all, it's like behaviorism. It's the effect. If we're seeing an effect of mistrust, then whatever they went through was mistrust enough. If, they're see, if we're seeing a pattern of positive connections with individuals most of the time, not that they can't get burned later, but they get, you know, most of their relationships are, are pretty good, uh, personal friend relationships and whatnot, then we pretty much assume they did okay in the trust versus mistrust area. The second stage is autonomy versus doubt. This is the terrible twos. This is the child is starting to want to do things on their own. And how supportive is, in the, is the environment in terms of responding to that need, that desire, yet at the same time maintaining a safe environment. And so that autonomy versus doubt, you'll see, you know, the trust versus mistrust is pretty simple, but you look at that dichotomy of autonomy versus doubt, what the person doubts is their ability to actually do things on their own. Now, again, this is very, very fundamental. These two first stages, very fundamental uh, psychological growth that's going on. Problems in these two stages, like I said, often have lifelong consequences. The fact that Freud said early life experiences are important, he was one of the first people to actually bring that into the scientific mindset, is a tremendous advance in, uh, in understanding how human beings develop healthy and Erickson follows through with that, looking at these two stages, and we'll look at three and four later on through the whole course. But you look at one and two, and things go wrong there, it's not a good place for things to go wrong. And so I'm having you discuss that uh, in the first discussion. Personal experiences, people that you've seen, and interestingly enough, we can actually look at adults and speculate how well those two stages went through. If you're looking at an individual who has a really hard time relate, uh, relating to other people, doesn't have a whole lot of attachment, doesn't have close relationships, and is has and or really struggles with being able to be independent and doing their own things, you're probably looking at someone who had struggles in that early part of their lives. If you're looking at someone who has it together, they've had relationships, they're autonomous, they get and do things, uh, particularly if you look at very successful people, you're probably looking at individuals that had very good um, early childhood experiences for the, through these first couple years. I suggest that you talk to your interviewee, to the subject of your biography, and kind of get a sense of what their early life was like. It could add to your, to your uh, biography and everything. But just reach out to them and say, you know, kind of talk about this and how do they think their very, very early experiences related to what, you know, whether they struggled or, or had successes later in life. Just a really good way to enrich uh, this particular discussion. The quiz, two areas, one is in the neurological area, the other one is the introduction of Piaget's work. Now in the neurological, it's sort of a critical thinking question, it's a very simple answer to this, it's a little hint, it's a very, very simple answer. What's the deal with myelination? What does it do? Why is it advantageous? those kind of things, describe the process of myelination. And then in assimilation and accommodation, this is actually a really, really highly interesting area of my current work that's going on right now in writing a course called Constructionism, which is a modern view of um, 
manifesting assimilation and accommodation in the physical world as a learning tool. And so just that's an aside, but assimilation and accommodation, Piaget's terms for the basic processes of learning, I assimilate new information and build up schemas, which are internal representations of ideas, persons, knowledge, while at the same time, when I experience new information that is in contrary to internal schemas, representations of those things, I have to accommodate those to new facts. The notion that this is so fluid early in life, and yet we might be a little bit more rigid and stick to our what we know, a little less accommodating later in life, sort of has that portrayal of you can't teach an old dog new tricks. They don't assimilate as well. That is not true for everybody, definitively. And uh, But if you ever meet someone, they're stuck in their ways, then maybe they've stopped accommodating their internal ideas to external facts. So that's sort of a, a really general way of looking at those things. But Piaget recognizes these very early in life, identifies these as the basic processes by which we expand and come to know the world. Great, great basic concepts and understanding learning itself. Okay, now this week is also the due dates for the quests. Quest number one and quest number two. Now I'm going to tell you something, and this might set some of you up for failure, and I hope it doesn't. There's no due dates on this. In fact, in the system, in the, in the, in the uh, whole course, I haven't put due dates on anything built into the... I put due dates in the timeline as guideposts to make it through this class in the best way possible. If you are wise, you will get things done in time as they are laid out in the timeline. However, that doesn't mean they're going to drop off the face of the earth once that due date is done. So keep that in mind if you're having a rough week. First, do something about having rough weeks so you don't have them as often. Second, if you've missed something, go and do it. The quests are like that. The quests are all the actual due date and the time they are going to disappear is at the end of the semester. And that due date is in the uh, course book. You have to do two parts for each one. There's the quest where you're playing the game and you're having your character go through that environment and attain those developmental milestones. And then the second part is a quiz, multiple choice quiz, that tests you on all of those milestones. Uh, so um, this is still experimental to me. Sometimes it bugs me setting it all up and the confusion and all that. But for the most part, students have really enjoyed it. So I've, I've stuck with it, even though I've had some doubts about it, because students have said it's actually kind of fun. And it's kind of a different way to learn those developmental milestones. And so the first two of them this week, we've had some time to get, get you in there, get you acclimated into the class. Things are starting to go. So things to keep in mind this week. Chapter three, discussion and quiz. Quest number one and number two. And at the beginning, top of the hour, I talked to you about getting that biography proposal into me so that I know that you are making progress on that biography, which if you put off is going to be a bear. You don't want to do that. So reach out if you have any questions, um, preferably my KVCC email, but I am getting adapted to the, to the email and messaging system in Brightspace. So I'm starting to check that on a regular basis. I found one this morning that was like almost a month old. Um, but I'll be checking those. I'll be doing more routine checks into there and grading and all that. But if there's any questions, please send me an email. Um, specify what class you're talking about because I got a whole bunch of them going on and uh, haven't really matched the names to the classes yet. So uh, be clear about that. And have a great week. Um, dive right into this. Put time every day. This is not burdensome work. Uh, fit it into your day. Make sure you fit in some relaxation time. It is summer. 
uh, spend some time with your family, do fun things. That's why I'm doing this video on Tuesday. Yesterday, I just turned everything off, and we need to do that sometimes. So have a great week. Reach out if there's any issues, and I will see you in the discussion boards.